One of the simple things that is so often overlooked when it comes down to any endurance activity is that your body is already preferring fat utilization, whether you are on a ketogenic diet or not. Let me say that again so it makes crystal clear sense. Whether you are on a keto diet or not, your body wants to use fats when you're doing endurance work. In this video, we're gonna break down exactly how the ketogenic diet works with endurance activity, but also the physiology behind what your body's actually doing when you're going for a longer run, or when you're going for a hike, or when you're just out there cycling, or doing anything that's longer than the traditional maybe gym workout. Hey, you are tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel. We got new videos coming out every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And please do yourself and us a favor by hitting that little bell icon so you can turn on notifications, be part of the notification squad, and never ever miss a video. All right, let's get down to the science of this stuff. So when you're doing endurance work, your body is using fats. It's something known as beta oxidation. Your body's actually using both carbs and fats. Now, the first example I wanna give is if you are not on the keto diet. Okay, you're just a regular person eating a regular diet that's doing some endurance work. You see, when you're doing low intensity activity, what happens is you're breathing in oxygen and that oxygen is coming in at a slow enough rate where it can combine with things within your body to create energy. Essentially, it's combining with fats. It's called beta oxidation. But the moment that you start increasing your intensity up to the point where you're actually having to breathe heavily or you're going into maybe some weight training or a sprint, well, at that point, your body can't keep up with the oxygen that's coming in. Then, and only then, is really when your body wants to use those carbohydrates to a higher degree. So basically what I mean is when you're at low intensity and you're just doing endurance work, you're mostly using fats and a small amount of carbohydrates. Okay? But when you kick into high gear, then your body taps into carbohydrate reserves. So maybe you've heard of hitting the bonk before, or maybe hitting the wall. Like if you've trained for a marathon or a triathlon, you've heard coaches talk about what happens. You're a couple hours in and all of a sudden you just hit this wall and you can't perform anymore. It's also known as the bonk. But what that is, is basically where your body runs out of carbohydrates altogether. So that combination of fats and carbs that your body was utilizing, well, now it's not working as well because carbs are out of the equation. You see, you only hold about 1,600, maybe 2,000 calories worth of energy in terms of carbohydrates within your body. That may sound like a lot of calories, but if you're working and training for a triathlon or something like that, you're gonna burn through 1600 calories pretty quick. And then what's gonna happen is your body is gonna only have fat to use as a fuel source, but the downside is your body doesn't know how to use that fat super efficiently because you're not keto adapted, okay? Operative words there being keto adapted. Now don't get me wrong, when you're doing endurance activity, you still need some carbs, okay? You still need carbs to be able to prepare you for those hills, okay? Things like that. So again, example, you're running. You're going on a nice flat run. You're in beta oxidation mode. You're breathing enough oxygen. You're going at enough rate where you can actually create energy at a nice even pace. But then all of a sudden you hit that hill. Okay, boom, now you're winded. Now your body has no choice but to start pulling those carbohydrates as much as possible. So obviously you still need carbohydrates in your system, but you can get by without consuming carbohydrates because carbohydrates are still gonna be stored inside your muscles when you're on a ketogenic diet. So let's look at a study that breaks this down perfectly. Okay, there was a study that was published in the journal Metabolism. It took a look at 20 test subjects. Okay, these test subjects were elite endurance athletes, so they already were conditioned. Okay, and for 20 weeks, they compared the metabolic differences between being on a high carb diet and being on a low carb, high fat diet. So what they had them do is on day one, they had them determine their max oxygen consumption and their peak fat burning rate. So basically how much fat they were utilizing for energy. Then on day two, what they had them do is they had them go for three hours on a treadmill at 64% of that max oxygen rate. And they wanted to just determine how much fat they were using, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, then they did this again at the end of 20 weeks. So the thing I like about the study is it's a long study. It took a look at the effects of essentially a keto diet for the long term. The findings were really interesting. So when you compared the high carb group and the low carb group, they found that the low carb group ended up utilizing fat at 2.3 times the amount of the high carb group. So essentially the low carb group ended up utilizing 1.5 grams of fat per minute and the high carb group ended up utilizing 0.67 grams of fat per minute. Okay, so case in point there, the body's still using fat, whether you're high carb or low carb, but when you're low carb and high fat diet, 
you're able to utilize that fat a lot better. And remember, like I was explaining earlier in this video, the fat is what's gonna give you the energy. So if you can use the fat more efficiently or more effectively, or at least in more abundance, you're in a much better situation. But now, the cool thing was, this study also found that glycogen, the stored carbohydrates in our muscles, didn't change between the groups. So literally, even the people that were not consuming carbs for 20 weeks or very low carbs, they still had the same amount of glycogen in their muscles at the end of the workout as the high carb group because the keto diet actually preserves muscle glycogen. So even though you're not consuming carbs, you still have the ability to have just enough carbohydrates in your system to get you through those periods of hills. So if you're an elite endurance athlete and you're training for a triathlon and you know that you're gonna have to break into a sprint at some point, you can rest assured that on the keto diet, you're still going to have enough carbohydrates stored in your muscles to get you through those periods of anaerobic activity. So again, if we can truly comprehend the physiology and know that our body prefers those fats while we're doing endurance activity, it allows the keto diet to make a heck of a lot of sense. Now, if you're out going for a long run or a long hike, there's things that you should take into consideration. And this is exactly where my friends at F-Farm come in. Now, there used to be products that would give you a quick shot of glucose, a quick shot of carbohydrates. You probably remember them, okay? Things like when you're doing a marathon, you have a quick shot of gooey carbohydrates. And honestly, that's a thing of the past because all that does is pick you up and drop you. Now that we understand that the body utilizes fats as a fuel source during endurance activity, especially on a ketogenic diet, We've changed the paradigm here. So you have products like F-Bomb, which are super high quality macadamia nut butters, and they're usually combined with coconut or dark chocolate or something that tastes really, really good. These are the kind of things that you wanna be utilizing. Quick energy, that's the kind of energy, true fat energy that you need for endurance activity. So I work with a lot of military guys and gals, I work with spec ops guys and gals, and we're talking people that do some pretty long endurance treks and do some pretty amazing things. But I also work with high level athletes, and these are the kinds of things that they consume. They're easy to bring with you, they're easy to get your calories in, but they also taste amazing. And the guys over at F-Bomb have done a phenomenal job because when it comes down to macadamia nuts, you're not having the phytates that you would normally get from like almond butter. And you're talking something that's much easier to digest. So it's easy to bring with you. So if you're out hiking or anything like that and you want a quick energy source without spiking your blood sugar, but you wanna actually fuel what's literally driving your endurance activity, you're gonna wanna use something like F-Bomb. Now these guys are a huge sponsor of this channel. They make these videos possible. So huge thank you to them, but also, they're giving a special discount to all my fans and all the viewers of my videos. So if you look down in the description, you can get yourself some of these F-bomb packets. And even if you're not doing endurance activity, they're perfect just because they taste amazing and they'll keep you satiated. So when you're done watching this video, check them out down in the description. You can get a special discount and trust me, you will love them. All right, so now let's take a look at some other stuff. There's another study that took a look a little bit more in the way of the performance side of things. Okay, we talked about kind of the metabolic processes, which is great but what about how that actually affects performance and VO2 max and things like that? So this study was published in the Journal of Physiology. Okay, what this study did is it took a look at a three week time period with three different groups. One group was consuming a high carb diet. Another group was consuming a periodized carb diet, which was basically a form of carb cycling. And another group was doing a high fat, low carb diet. Okay, and what they wanted to find was not just the peak fat utilization, but also how it affected performance. So at the end of the three weeks, they did find that the high fat, low carb group ended up burning 2.5 times more fat than both carbohydrate groups. That's in line with the previous study that I referenced. So yeah, we have some pretty solid congruency there that shows that fat utilization is going to increase. But we have to play devil's advocate here because one of the biggest things, the biggest arguments that people make against the keto diet is that although more fat is available, it could be less efficient to utilize that fat. And the study actually found that there was a slight decrease in VO2 max over a long period of time in the fat group. So even though they were using more fat, it was somewhat counteracted by the fact that that fat wasn't utilized super efficiently. However, and this is a big however, this study was only three weeks and it comes right back to the point that I made at the beginning of this video. That point is simply put that they were not fat adapted. It takes longer than three weeks to get yourself fat adapted. So the purpose of everything that I'm saying in this entire video is that if you choose to do the keto diet, you don't even have to do it forever. You can do it for a long enough period of time where your body becomes fat adapted. But if you do it for three weeks, sure, you're gonna have an increase in your body utilizing fat, and that's cool. The fact that it happens so fast is amazing. 
but you're not going to have the metabolic efficiency unless you push it for at least six weeks. So if you're training for endurance activity, you need to commit to doing the keto diet for at least six weeks, but honestly, you should just make it more of a lifestyle because three weeks is going to get you that fat utilization, but it's going to balance out. It's going to end up balancing out because you're not going to be as efficient. So stick it out for a little bit longer because honestly, once your body learns how to digest the fats a little bit better, but more importantly, your mitochondria and your cells know how to actually utilize it, you're gonna be able to shift that gear even more and you're gonna be able to improve not only your fat utilization, but you're gonna improve your efficiency with it because your mitochondria, the powerhouse inside your cells, is gonna know how to use it. And it's gonna be able to flip between carbs and fats significantly easier, giving you the upper hand against the competition, which may or may not just be yourself, depending on why you're doing these endurance activities. So make sure that you give keto a shot as it truly is powerful, and I mean really powerful, for endurance activities. It's one of those things where you legitimately feel the difference as soon as you're in that ketogenic state. And make sure that you take advantage of the F-bomb offer that's down in the description. You will not be disappointed. They are seriously top, top notch with some of the best quality fats that are out there. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I will see you in the next video.